Okay, so I'm going to skip a little bit ahead for this video and show you something cool rather than something functional. So um, let's create a 3D grid of objects. Let's do 5x5x5 five by five by five like that. And um, if I add a mesh network and add dynamics to it, um, again, rewind and play, you get that. Fair enough, whatever. Um, and then if I add a sphere underneath like so and I make the sphere a collider object like so just rewind and hit play and we get that and that's fair enough um so mash dynamics has a super cool feature I'm really happy with and it is constraints so if I uh, just add a constraint object constraint node and view this from the top down you'll see we have automatically generated a whole mess of constraints uh, on top of these objects so what a constraint is uh, it will join shapes to well, do many things it will join shapes together glue them together or it will add springs to objects or it will connect them to other mesh networks or connect them to specific points and all this kind of thing so um, what we'll do is uh, to show you a very basic example of this uh, I will um, change the constraints uh, search distance to something like let's say 1.5 and then we can see we have a grid of constraints so these objects are by default the uh, constraint type is glue they're all glued together so if I hit 4 here you can see that we have this nice grid of things that um, glued together if I, just, if, I, if I change that to 6 um, you can see now everything is stuck together wonderful okay cool so now if I press play we get this we just get the objects all stuck together, balancing on top of our sphere, and then kind of sliding off, and then bouncing on the floor together. Cool, okay. So, um, now, uh, the fun starts when you start doing things like making the constraints breakable. So if we rewind and hit play again, we have these chunks of objects, and then they can all break apart when a force is, um, acting on the object is greater than two. Um, so magnitude is greater than two, I should say. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, but in itself, it's um, not uh, so mind blowing. Um, however, we have this really cool feature called connection masking. Now what connection masking allows us to do is it allows us to use a texture to control what objects can connect to what objects. So this could be anything like a volume noise, uh, but to show a really simple example, let's just add a ramp. So I'm just gonna add a ramp. And by default, our ramp is a V ramp, so it's a vertical ramp, so it's going up and down like this. And so it has separated our objects into slices. So if I change this to an, a U ramp, which is kind of more in line with what we have on the um, in the attribute editor, then that makes kind of more sense because now it's an analog. Um, you can see that we have changed our object kind of into slices. And then if I rewind and hit play, you can see that we I have everything split into slices. So nothing across a slice is going to to each other. So um, I'm just going to turn off breakable and so you can see more what's going on. So we've now created slices of objects, which is pretty fun. So we can go back in here and we can do cool things uh, like uh, change this to a diagonal ramp, uh, radial ramp, and I should, you know what? I'm going to add some more objects so that this is more obvious. So let's add, um, let's add eight in each direction and then like spread these out a bit more. Something like that. Um, where were we? Um, I was just playing with the ramp types. Constraint through to the ramp. And then um, circular ramp like so, or box ramp, which is pretty cool actually. Um, let's stop at box ramp and press play. And we get this, which is pretty fun. Everything's really struggling to uh, fit around the outside of the uh, sphere. I'm just going to shrink that slightly. So I'll have to play with the collision settings. And then we get that, which is fun. So what would be cool in the situation is if we um, make the constraint breakable. So let's do that. So we've got like concentric rings of cubes. And then if we just make this breakable, We've got like a super cool and slightly kind of complex effect really, really quickly and easily. So let's change the breakable threshold to four and then I'm gonna go into the ground plane and I'm gonna turn the friction up and then I'll turn the friction up on the dynamics here as well. Just 
to make it slightly more interesting. And then that's what you get. So, it's pretty fun, complex effects set up like within just a few clicks. Um, so, let's dump the uh, map mask. Actually, what I'm going to do is I will show you the color threshold here underneath as well. So if I change this back to a U-Ramp, you see we've got everything arranged in slices here. If I change the color threshold, what I can do is um, uh, you change the amount a texture color needs to change. Now, it's always done in black and white. So you change the amount of value needs to change in order for objects to not connect to each other. So you can actually like make larger groups of objects by messing with the color object, by messing with the color threshold, sorry. Uh, so you can make thinner ones uh, just with the, the defaults pretty low so um actually let's so let's dump the map mask and then let's add something like a volume noise oh if i can find it what's it called volume volume noise volume noise volume noise uh don't let me search for it there it is volume noise so if we had a volume noise we end up getting um like a kind of a 3d pattern of um, shapes so things are connected around corners and then um, and um, yeah so it's it's more it's much more random so you end up with much more random groups of things connected to each other and then you can uh, change the maximum constraints something like I don't know three so that you don't get any large groups but they're kind of still random and then um, if we play this back turn breakable off just so you can see we've got kind of random sized chunks of objects that are all kind of interlocked and kind of messed up <laughs> yeah and then if we turn breakable on but it's quite the settings quite high here you end up with odd groups of objects stuck together still which is pretty cool so yeah that's um that's a very quick look at uh, the constraint connection masking. I appreciate I have skipped ahead in these tutorials, but I just wanted to show you something fun and cool. So uh, there you go. And then I think the, the next one is going to be back to something uh, slightly more um, uh, sedate and um, perfunctory. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that.